Hey YouTube, today we're exploring six unique and lesser known Go techniques. First, let's talk about Go's Generate command. This tool automates code generation, saving you time and reducing mistakes. With Go Generate, you can add special comments in your code to run specific commands, which is great for creating boilerplate code. In this example, the Go Generate command tells the Go tool to run the stringer command, which generates a string representation for the status constants. This can be incredibly useful when you need a consistent way to convert constants to their string values throughout your code base. In this next example, the Go Generate runs the MockGen tool to generate a mock implementation of my interface. This is very useful for testing, as it allows you to create mock objects automatically. The mock object allows you to verify that do something was called with the expected parameters and returns the expected result, helping you test your code in isolation. Here, GoGenerate runs the command to compile protocol buffers definitions into Go code. This is essential for applications that use gRPC for communication. Imagine you're working on a large code base with many constants, enums, or similar repetitive code structures. Manually writing conversion functions or string representations can be tedious and error prone. With GoGenerate, you can automate these tasks, ensuring consistency and saving time. One more thing about generators. I found this cool article that discusses how to manage your tool versions. We receive an error if we don't pre-install the stringer command, for example. One approach is to have a makefile task that parses the tools file and installs those dependencies. Alternatively, because we've already pinned the dependencies and their versions in our go.mod file, we can achieve this through the declaration in the tools file. This brings us to the next technique, build tags. Build tags provide a powerful way to include or exclude files from the build process based on specific conditions. They can be particularly useful for managing different build environments or conditional compilation. Build tags are special comments in Go that control when a file should be included in the package. Let's use our last example. This line is the modern syntax for build tags introduced in Go 1.17. It specifies that the file should be included when the tool's build tag is set. This line is the legacy syntax for the same build tag, ensuring compatibility with older versions of Go. Build tags are used at the top of the file and must be the first lines in the file. In this example, the plus build Linux tag at the top of the file ensures that this code is only included in the build process when targeting Linux. This allows you to maintain platform-specific code separately and avoid cluttering your code base with conditionals. Similarly, you can have a different implementation for Windows by using build windows. This ensures your code is clean and organized with OS-specific code in separate files. You can also use custom build tags like debug to include or exclude code based on custom conditions. This is useful for including debug or testing code without affecting the production build. Next, let's explore the function options pattern. Consider developing a web server framework where users need to configure various parameters like host, port, timeouts, and security settings. The function options pattern allows users to specify only the options they care about, providing default values for the rest. This makes your API user-friendly and reduces the risk of breaking changes if new configuration options are added in the future. This pattern provides a flexible way to handle configuration in your functions and constructors. Instead of creating multiple constructors or using complex parameter lists, the function options pattern allows you to use options as functions that modify the configuration of your struct. In this example, we have a server struct with default values for host and port. The option type is a function that modifies the server configuration. Functions like with host and with port return these options, which can then be passed to the new server function to customize the server configuration. This pattern is very clean and makes it easy to add new configuration options without breaking existing code. Now let's compare the function options pattern with the builder pattern which is commonly used in languages like Java. The builder pattern involves creating a separate builder struct to handle the configuration and then constructing the final object. In this example, the server builder struct is responsible for configuring and constructing the server. Each configuration method, like setHost and setPort, returns the builder itself allowing for method chaining. Finally, the build method constructs the server instance with the configured values. Both the function options pattern and the builder pattern aim to solve the problem of configuring complex objects in a flexible and maintainable way, but they do so differently. Use the choosing between these patterns depends on the specific needs of your project. For most Go applications, the function options pattern is more idiomatic and aligns well with Go's simplicity and flexibility. Error handling is crucial in any programming language and Go makes it easy with its built-in error type. 
However, simply returning errors isn't always enough. You often need to provide context for what went wrong. Imagine you're developing a microservice that interacts with multiple external services, like a database and a third-party API. When an error occurs, simply returning the error isn't helpful for diagnosing the root cause. By wrapping errors, you can provide a clear and detailed context of what operation failed and why, which is crucial for debugging and maintaining reliable services. This is where error wrapping with format error format comes in handy. It allows you to add context to your errors, making debugging much easier. In this example, if some function returns an error, we wrap it with additional context using fairer format. The %w verb is used to include the original error. This wrapped error provides a complete picture of what went wrong, making it easier to trace the source of the problem. In this example, network and IO errors are wrapped with context that includes the URL being accessed, providing more useful error messages. Here, any database query errors are wrapped with a message indicating the query operation, which helps in identifying issues in database interactions. The next technique is using contexts for cancellation. The context package is an essential tool for managing cancellations and timeouts in concurrent Go programs. By passing a context through your functions, you can signal cancellation across Go routines and control the lifespan of operations. This improves resource management and ensures that your application can respond to changes promptly. Imagine you're developing a web server that handles incoming HTTP requests. Some requests might involve long-running operations, such as querying a database or calling an external API. Using context for cancellation, you can gracefully handle client cancellations, for example, if the user navigates away from the page, and avoid wasting resources on operations that are no longer needed. This improves the efficiency and responsiveness of your server. Using context with timeout, you can set a timeout for operations. If the operation takes longer than the specified time, the context will be cancelled automatically. Similarly, context with deadline allows you to set a specific time at which the context will be cancelled, providing even more control over your operations. Finally, we'll look at JSON tagging for structs. Customizing JSON encoding and decoding with struct tags can give you precise control over how your data is marshaled and unmarshaled. This is particularly useful for APIs where you need to ensure that the JSON output matches specific requirements and excludes sensitive information. Imagine you're building a RESTful API that returns user data. Some fields, like passwords or internal IDs, should not be exposed to clients for security reasons. By using JSON tags, you can control the visibility of struct fields, ensuring that sensitive information is never sent in the API response. This approach helps maintain data privacy and security while providing a clean and consistent API interface. In this example, the user struct has JSON tags that control which fields are included in the JSON output. The email and age fields use the omit empty and gateway tags respectively to conditionally include or exclude them. The API user struct embeds user and adds a status field, allowing you to customize the JSON output for different contexts. Additional useful JSON tags. Omit empty omits the field from JSON if it has an empty value, zero value for the type. Completely excludes the field from JSON encoding and decoding. JSON. Name. String. Encodes decodes the field as a JSON string useful for numeric fields that need to be strings in JSON. JSON. Name, omit empty string. Combines omit empty and string encoding, decoding. That's it for our six unique Go techniques. By incorporating these into your projects, you'll write more efficient, idiomatic, and powerful code. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to DatCut for more programming tips and tutorials. Comment below with any questions or topics you'd like me to cover next. Thanks for watching and happy coding!